The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Before we start setting up sensors and other modules, we should get more familiar with programming in the syntax of the Arduino language. That way, you'll be able to really understand what's happening in each sketch throughout the rest of the course. The Arduino programming language is based on a combination of C and C++, with a few functions that are unique to the Arduino. I want to start by showing you a great resource that you can use if you ever get stuck, or need to find out how to use a function or keyword. It's the Arduino reference page. Here you'll find a list of all the different functions, data types, operators, and a lot more. If you click on a function, you'll be taken to a page with more information about it. There's a description that explains what the function does, how to write it, what arguments it takes, and the data type it returns, if any. There's also example code so you can see how to use it in a sketch. It's a great resource and the first place you should check to see how to use a function. Okay, now to the main topic of this video, variables. Variables are probably the most basic thing we'll learn in programming, but they're also the most useful. So what is a variable? A variable is like a container or a bucket. They're used to store things. Variables store data. Variables represent locations in the Arduino static RAM memory that are reserved for whatever data the variable is holding. Variables can store constant values like the number 5, or they can store values that change, like the input from a sensor. But variables can hold more than just numbers. They can hold strings, functions, and even other variables. To create a variable, all you have to do is give it a name and set it equal to something. It's good to give variables descriptive names. Names that will remind you of what they're used for later on. Say I wanted to make a variable to store the reading from a temperature sensor. I might name it temp reading or temp data. You can name variables any way you want, but there are a couple formats that are common in Arduino programming. One format uses an underscore to separate words, like this. Another format capitalizes the second word in the variable, like this. This way is probably the most common. However you decide to name your variables, it's a good idea to stick with the same format throughout your program. That way you'll be able to recognize them easier and tell them apart from other parts of your code. You can use numbers in variable names. You just can't start with the number. So variable four is okay, but not for variable. You also can't name variables with words that are keywords. A keyword is a core Arduino function, operator, or data type. Everything you see on the Arduino reference page is a keyword. Libraries have their own special keywords too. You can tell if a word is a keyword in the IDE because the text will be colored rather than black. 
Creating a variable is called declaring a variable. To declare a variable, first you write what data type the variable will be. I'll explain more about data types in the next video. But for now, let's just say you want the variable to contain an integer. The data type for integers is written int. So you type int here, and then you write the name of the variable. Then you set the variable equal to something, like a number, a variable, or a function. Variable declarations have to end with a semicolon. So there you go, that's how you declare a variable. Since variables can hold numbers, you can do math with variables. You can add, subtract, multiply, or divide variables. And you can also do more advanced math with them too. Let's make a simple calculator to demonstrate. Let's say we want to add, subtract, multiply, and divide two numbers. We're going to need variables to store the result from each of those calculations. So I'm going to declare an int variable called addition. One way to declare a variable is to set it equal to something right away. Or you can declare it now and set it equal to something later on. Since we don't know what the sum of our numbers is going to be, I'm going to declare it without setting it equal to anything. Then I'm going to do the same with a variable for subtraction. Multiplication. and division. We only want the calculator to run once, so we can put the code in the setup section. We can leave the loop section empty. We're going to print the results to the serial monitor, so we need to initialize the serial port with serial.begin 9600. Now we need some numbers to input into our calculator. And this brings us to the topic of variable scope. The scope of a variable defines where it can be used in a program. There are two types of scope, global and local. Global variables can be used anywhere in a program, in the loop section, the setup section, and in other functions. They're usually declared at the top of the sketch, like our addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division variables. Local variables get declared inside the function where they're used, and they can only be used inside that function. I'm going to declare a couple local variables to hold the numbers we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. And since I'm declaring them inside the setup function, they can only be used inside the setup function. If we tried to use them inside the loop function, we'd get a compiler error saying variable was not declared in this scope. We're just going to use two numbers for this calculator, so I'll declare a local int variable called a and set it equal to 6. The second number will be stored in another local int variable. Let's call it b and set it equal to 3. Now let's do some math. We already declared global variables to store the results from our calculations up at the top of the sketch. So here, all we need to do is define them by setting them equal to something. We don't need to declare them again or write the data type. We just need to write the variable name then set them equal to something. In this case, we're going to add our two local variables, so I'll set the addition variable equal to a plus b, and end with a semicolon. Now we need to do the same for the other operations, so I'll enter the subtraction variable, and set it equal to a minus b. Multiplication will be a times b. The operator for multiplication is the asterisk, and division. The operator for division is the forward slash. All we need to do now is print the results of the calculations to the serial monitor. So down here, I'm going to use a serial print with a bit of text that says sum equals. To print text strings with serial print, we have to enclose the string in quotation marks. So I'll just enter sum equals in quotation marks with a space at the end to separate the text from the answer. Now we need to print the value that's stored in the addition variable. To do that, we still use serial print, but since it's a variable, 
we don't put it inside quotation marks. Actually, let's make this go to a new line after it prints. I need to do the same thing for each one of the calculations. All right, let's try this out. So here are the results of the calculations. Six plus three is nine. Six minus three is three. Six times three is 18. And six divided by three is two. This calculator is pretty simple. You can probably just do these calculations in your head, but it's a good example of how to work with variables. It's also easy to see how variables make it easier to make changes in your program. For example, say we wanted to change the numbers we're calculating. Without variables, we would have to go in here and change each one of these. But with variables, we just need to change it up here in one place. This becomes really useful in longer programs where you might use the same variable in lots of places. One last thing I want to show you is that variables don't need to store the same value throughout the program. They can be changed at any point in the sketch. Since programs run from top to bottom, you can overwrite variables by setting them equal to something different later on. For example, here I'm going to declare local variable A and set it equal to 100, then print it out to the serial monitor. Then I'm going to set A equal to 50 and serial print it again. So this should print 100 first, then on the next line it should print 50. See how the first value of A is 100, then the second value is 50? In the next video, we're going to learn about data types, which define what kinds of data variables can store. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.